Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, some of you might recall that several years ago, I was on Throwdown with Bobby Flay on the Food Network. Oh my goodness, what a unbelievable time that was. But you know, the next Food Network star, season 12, is coming up really soon. And today I have a very special guest. One of the contestants of the show is Augusta native, Havard Ushery. And Havard, I'm so glad to have you here. <laughs> it's an honor to be here. Oh, it's, it's just, awesome it's wonderful. You. And I am so excited for you. And for those of you that don't know, Havard is Vice President of Catering at Fat Man's. And Fat Man's is a historic part of the Augusta community. Yes, ma'am. Been in business for? 1948, so we're going on 56 seven years oh this my year, so gosh. pretty cool. Well, it's just the most incredible thing, and I'm so happy that you've had this opportunity. We can't tell too much, yes, but we're gonna, as we go through today <laughs> on what we're doing, we're gonna learn a little bit about your experience. But you know, this time of year, we're all excited about the weather being nice, spring and summer, and there are just some great foods that you consider your specialties I do. that you're going to be nice enough to share with us today. This so what are we going to be making? Today we're going to be making a cornmeal fried catfish and we are also going to be making a buttermilk uh, Brussels sprout coleslaw and we're going to finish Ooh. that off with a honey cat sauce which we'll leave that kind of a mystery until <laughs> we get cats. to that get to that segment and then also we're going to make a drink at the end. It's a grapefruit vodka uh, with a lemonade. So okay. It's beautiful and we've got some really cool ice cubes with some different herbs in them. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Well, why don't we get started on this catfish dish? Yes, and you know, we were talking earlier about I just love catfish and you know, the fresh market always has this available, but you made the comment about, you know, it's either really good or... Yeah, you know, <laughs> white fish in general, like it's just a blank canvas. So we want to make sure it's seasoned right and you've got those different levels of seasoning. The seasoned flour that you dredge it in, egg wash, and then make sure we've got the cornmeal seasoned as well. So it's those different layers that we add that flavor to. Right. Um, so if you could just add a little salt and pepper to those, which we've patted dry already. Yes, gosh, these are just, and they're just the perfect size. Now, did you cut these at all? I did, so it's a full filet. I cut it down uh, the middle line, and then once we fry those, it'll actually make it curl a little bit. So when we plate it, after mm -hmm. we've uh, cut it down the middle line, then it gives a nice little presentation, a little upscale southern food presentation. I'm going to keep a dry hand and then a wet hand as we... Well, and that's a really important fact because, you know, a lot of times you you get carried away and... Gets a little messy. It gets a little <laughs> messy. These pans are really cool too. Yeah, these are awesome and they have lids on them as well. So if you uh, want to keep this in the refrigerator, the egg wash, if you're going to go again, um, the next Gosh, day with that's going to be fish so oh, nice and crispy. Beautiful. Well, tell me a little bit about the, the whole process of managing to get on the so, Next Food Network star. Actually, my wife and I, we were, we were watching the show about a year ago to date, and uh, there was a simple application online. I put it in, didn't even think I would hear anything back oh. at all. Uh, come November, I got a phone call. I went through, I think, 15 rounds of interviews, and three of those were background checks. Uh, background so, checks. So, so I had to do demos online, like cooking demos. I had to do different presentations of different dishes, show Food Network what I was all about. That part was actually more difficult, I think, than, than <laughs> once I got there to the show because it was just so many rounds and so brutal as far as you know what these producers are thinking and if you're even going to get the opportunity. But once I did, it was a absolute honor. I was sitting back in my office with Miss Pearl, who has been in our restaurant for 50 plus years and worked for my grandfather and they actually announced it with her sitting beside me so it was a really cool moment that we got to share together oh, so my. really neat. Okay so we've got some oil in the um, fryer over there. We do. And, um, we have a, a half soy oil and half peanut oil in the fryer over here and we're going to be cooking at about 350 degrees. Okay. And, you know it's going to take about three to four minutes to really get these golden brown. Well you know competitive nature is part of your game because 
Havard and I actually met through Richmond Academy soccer that he played with my son. So I know you love to win, you compete well. So I'm just, I just can't wait to see how the outcome is going to be. So we're going to keep working on this, get these d dipped down in that fryer to go. But when we come back from the break, we're going to be finishing up the catfish and then we're going to start on this delicious Brussels sprout slaw. So come back with us in just a few minutes. God, that looks great. Yeah, it does. Welcome back everybody and if you're just joining us, I'm with my good friend Havard Ushery who might potentially be the next Food Network star and as a contestant <laughs> on season 12 on the next Food Network star, I'm so excited that he's an Augusta native. We're representing the state of Georgia here. Yes, it makes me so happy. But um, we've been really busy. He's kind of gotten us going on some delicious looking catfish here. And where do we stand so with the process? We're pulling out the last two uh, fillets of cornmeal breaded catfish here. Gosh, they look so crispy. And you know, the fact that it didn't get so clumped up the way that you went through the breading process. We oh, really want to make sure looks. we put, put these on uh, a paper towel just so we soak up any excess grease that uh, right. might be with the left on the breading there and it also helps get a get a good crunch. Oh that smell is so fantastic too. Well you know we've got some other work to do but I've just got to ask if you would be willing to share maybe a tiny bit about well, what you did on the show. You know actually it's very mm -hmm. I'm being very true to it right now it's very southern cuisine that I've stuck to even on the show and uh you know I, I go to a very modern presentation is what i try to do so our old-fashioned southern cuisine the history behind it do those things and uh be truthful to those ingredients as well right. but when i go to present things and i think we'll show a little bit of that today with some some vibrant colors and uh, just have a modern presentation. Well, and you do that in your business too, Haver, you know, because your company has so much history yeah. and it's the food that everybody loves in our area, the Southern food, but you've got to stay current. And you know, your excitement and your youth that what you've brought into the company is really Yeah, reflected. I think the last, the last five years, I've really tried to go more culinary geared and you know, just bring an upscale presentation, especially in our catering. Well, I went ahead and got started on these Brussels sprouts and again that's just something that I love to pick up at Fresh Market. They've all got, got them fresh in those little bags. It's so great. So um, I think they're just about right. Just about there. Uh, we rendered a little bit of bacon, cooked them in the bacon fat. I'm going to make the dressing for the Brussels sprout slaw. We've got some buttermilk, a third of a cup. We have some apple cider vinegar, about a third of a cup as well. And that's going to start curdling that buttermilk it too, is. right? It is, and we're going to get that stirred, and we are going to add some mayonnaise into there. God, those are all very southern ingredients for sure. Duke's mayonnaise. Well, and you know, we didn't leave all the fat in the pan either, so for everybody that's freaking yeah. out that we're going with bacon drippings here, <laughs> we just kind of left it a little yeah, coated. Yeah, so we, we uh, took out about half the fat that was in there and just sauteed right. it in the other half. Then we're going to add some granulated sugar, and I have about a third of a cup in here. I'm going to leave a little bit behind so we can do it to taste here. Right. And we're going to whisk that up. Gosh, and you know, Brussels sprouts are like the new green vegetable. They are. You know, you see those on a menu and, um, you know, even just taking the leaves apart and just doing just leaves is a, is a nice a little twist bit of salt up. Sure. On those guys. And I love the but way yeah. you have this blended up. The, um, you know, Brussels sprouts just in the in the cabbage family, pretty much a small cabbage. You can saute them, you can roast them, uh, boil them. There's so many different ways that you, it's so versatile ingredient. Okay, so are you ready yep. for this? Come on in. Oh man, that is gonna be delicious. And we're gonna just kind of toss these 
Okay, and then I have got some something I thought would look, be really good on here, some sweet onion sugar from the salt table in Savannah, and they are just fantastic. When, when I let them know what they're making, they pick out all these different seasonings that we can do with it. Smell that. It's beautiful. I tasted I mean, I, some earlier. It's oh, awesome. Love it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there, too. And since this is sugar, then we won't probably use every bit of yeah, what you had there. Yeah, held back a little bit there. We're going to do a little more salt and pepper. Now let me ask you, if you wanted to do this on like a barbecue sandwich or something, you could chop that up, right? Yeah, so you could use, just like the you would for um, cabbage for a right. coleslaw, you could definitely go uh, thinner on the cut here, or quarter them, or even go less than that, chop it up, and you could make a slaw that could go on sandwiches, could go on top of barbecue. Uh, well, that just, I can't wait to see that finished. And if, when we come back from the break, we're going to start on this honey cat sauce. <laughs> I'm not real sure about that, but I know I want to know more about the ruby red lemonade. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Ask Vera is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Welcome back, everybody. And Havard and I, we're having a great time. We're just Food Network pros now, right? <laughs> we are. This is our own little Food Network that we're doing right now today. But the catfish just look amazing. But the thing that in interests me more than anything is this <laughs> honey cat sauce. You know, I'm thinking, what is a honey cat? And it makes me wonder, is it like a cat dipped in honey? I mean. What, what is it? You know, the sauce is really just made up of one part hot sauce, I use Texas Pete, and okay. one part honey, and it's just got a little fresh squeeze of lemon juice and some salt and pepper to taste. I have a chef that works for me down at the restaurant, and he had worked at a, a different restaurant prior to, who served catfish, and had this sauce, and one day he's like, well, let's just whip up some honey cat sauce for special that we were doing, and I was like, a what sauce, honey cat? I know that's what I but, said when but Emily. But the minute the minute you hear it, it's just it just kind of sticks. It's kind of a, a name that's just right. gone along with this sauce, and it's super simple. But it's at the color on it is absolutely electric when you're plating, and it's got a little bit of sweet with the yes. honey, a little bit of heat with the hot sauce, and then a little bit of acidity with the lemon. And it's well, you know, I always love to put a plug in for the local honey because that just seems to be a big hobby for people now, and I'm finding for sure myself that if you manage to get a tablespoon of that in your system throughout the year, mm -hmm. it helps you with your allergies. You know, this is actually, it's out of North Georgia, but it is considered a, a, local, a local honey. honey. So it's a, a Georgia honey. Let's get a little fresh squeeze of lemon juice in there. Ooh, that's a lot of hot sauce. It is. Havard. But that, it balances nice. It does, it okay. Does. It balances okay. nice. You gotta give it a good whisk though <laughs> because that honey will stiffen up. One good tip with the honey as well is just to pop it in the microwave real quick to loosen it up or have it room temperature. If you store it in the refrigerator or anything, right, it's just very right. difficult to work with. So we are just going to. And that's just gonna be a dipping sauce. It, we're actually gonna, when we plate it, we'll, we will put it on the plate, oh, okay. but it, it is just a, you know, just a sauce to go along with the oh, catfish. Oh, that sounds great. We're gonna do just a touch a bit of, of that. salt and pepper. And in my salt and pepper mix, I actually have a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder that I oh, balance cool. it out with too. But All that's right. it, that's, well, your, that's your honey cat sauce, super simple. Well, is the ruby red grapefruit um, lemonade gonna top it? It is, it's, this is an awesome drink. Going into summer, hanging out by the pool. Yeah. Um, What's better than, you know, mint ice cubes, just that smell of fresh herbs, and lemonade. Everybody loves lemonade during the well, summer. Well, it sounds so refreshing, and I love these glasses. Well, thank you. Thank I mean, you, those thank are you. really pretty. So we're going to start with just our ice cubes. Well, you know, several years ago, actually season one of the Very Vera Show, we did an episode out by somebody's pool, and we did these ice cubes, and we had so many comments from people about, you know, I never thought about that, but, you know, these are those ice cube things that we ha all had when they were, before there were ice makers, and you think, yeah, I'm going to throw those away, and um, they're just perfect. We do this a lot in the summertime with the kids Ooh. for cooking camp. So we've got about 
a two ounce pour of this Deep Eddy uh, grapefruit vodka. Okay, now tell me about that. So Deep Eddy is actually out of Austin, Texas. Super smooth vodka. You hear Tito's, Kettle One. I think it's right up there with them. And the flavors that they have are really cool. We just talked about the lemon flavored vodka they have. They also have sweet tea, which we are all oh, accustomed man. to. But this is one of my favorite drinks, one of my wife's favorite drinks too. And we'll garnish with just oh, a little. Oh, that is just, now if that's not Southern, I don't know which. what is. I mean, look at the, the colors are yes. absolutely perfect. Perfect. We'll get a good little stir. Well, that is gonna be quite refreshing. So we're gonna get this, this party well on the way. When we come back from the break, we're gonna put everything plated together because this is where Havard shines as a Food <laughs> Network star on the modern presentation of truly Southern food. So come back with us in just a few minutes.